Okay, so I hate to break it to you, but pretty much every single time you're gonna be cooking, you're gonna be using a knife. So it's pretty important that you learn to use one safely and efficiently. You know, basic knife skills are the first thing that I teach in every single one of my cooking lessons. And here are those tips and tricks just for you in this video. First, you wanna start with a stable chopping base. It's strange, but a lot of cutting boards just don't have a good grip against countertops. So in order to prevent any slippages from happening, what you wanna do is get a kitchen towel, make a little bit damp, fold it in half, and just slip it right underneath your cutting board. You see now that we've, you know, now that we've got that kitchen towel underneath there, that, that cutting board doesn't slip anymore. So that's what you want, a nice, stable base to chop on. So the next tip, and probably the most important tip, is to buy the best knife that you can afford. Again, you're gonna be using this knife every single time you cook, so it's worth the investment. So just like if you were buying a luxury car, you would still have to take it in for tune-ups. So same thing with a knife. Even if you buy a really, really nice knife, you still have to maintain it to keep it sharp. So the first thing you wanna do is buy a honing steel. These are not expensive. They're usually $20 to $30 and you wanna use it probably like every other time you are using your knife. Um, basically, the blade of your knife is made up of all these little teeth, and every time you use them, these teeth end up fraying. So by using the honing steel, you're bringing these teeth back together. All you wanna do is hold the honing steel in one hand, and then your knife in the other hand, and draw it from the back to the front of the blade at about a 30 degree angle, and do this on both sides about three to four times. And that will help maintain your knife throughout all the uses. I also take it to get professionally sharpened once or twice a year, and that actually renews the blade. It makes you feel like you have a brand new knife. And the last tip is to not put your knives in the dishwasher. Uh, the heat and the jostling of the dishwasher is not a good environment for your blade. So don't put them in there if you wanna keep them nice and sharp. Let's talk about how to hold your knife, because that's pretty important too for safety. I've seen students hold their knives in all sorts of different ways. I've seen people hold it towards the back of the handle. I've seen people hold it with the index finger out. These ways of holding your knife actually don't give you a lot of control over the knife when you're using it to chop, which is not good. What you wanna do is you wanna hold your knife where the blade and the handle meet, and you wanna hold it as if you were shaking somebody's hand. So just kinda of reach out and pretend to shake your knife's hand, and that's how you wanna wrap your fingers around it, just where the blade and the handle meet. That's gonna give you the uh, most leverage and the most control while you're chopping. So now that you know how to hold your knife, the next thing you wanna learn is how to chop with it. There are a couple of different ways to, you know, different techniques for chopping, um, but really the, there are three that you're gonna use most frequently. Is, the first is a rocking motion. Basically, you just wanna follow the natural contours of the blade. Rock the blade forward, pull it back, and then come down on it. You'll see that most of the force comes from the back of your knife. So whatever you're chopping, you wanna situate it on your cutting board so it is towards the back of your knife. So wherever that blade comes down, the back of the blade comes down. This rocking motion is used for chopping smaller things. Another method involves bringing your knife up and down. This is why a sharp knife is incredibly important because every time your knife comes down, you want it to be able to slice cleanly through whatever you're chopping. Um, this method is typically used for some larger vegetables, larger items that you're chopping, like an onion, for instance. Again, since most of the force comes from the back of the blade, you want to use, you want to situate whatever you're chopping towards the back. So the last method I call the pivot and fan. So you want to hold down your, the point of your knife with one hand and then basically use the other hand to fan out while you're chopping. Um, I typically use this to chop smaller things into mince and chop herbs. So a lot of people are afraid of chopping off their fingers while they're using their knives, and that's a completely valid fear. Especially since the way most people chop is they have their hands completely out with all their fingers splayed. Um, what you want to do is you want to hold whatever you're chopping with the tip of your fingers and then roll up and basically form a wall with your knuckles. So you really want to use your knuckles as a guide for your knife and also as a barrier so that you're not hurting yourself in any way. Another important safety tip is to create a flat surface with whatever you're chopping. So you probably have figured out that there are no square or rectangular vegetables. Um, so it's really up to you to think about what's the first chop you need to make so that you create a flat base to rest that vegetable on. You know, a rolling vegetable is a pain in the butt to chop and is definitely not safe. So really try to think about creating a flat base as your first cut with whatever you're chopping. So those are my basic knife tips and skills that'll help you get started in the kitchen. When you think about it, even the greatest chefs were not born knowing how to use a knife proficiently. You know, they all had to practice in order to get to where they are today. 
And so what I encourage you to do is to not get discouraged, to go out and buy yourself a nice sharp knife and get practicing. Just start chopping. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna get and the easier prepping is going to be, which is going to make your life in the kitchen so much easier. And knife skills are pretty fun to show off to your friends and family as well. Thank you.